In this video, we are going to be applying glass morphism to our Elementor websites. I'm going to show you how to create these glass style backgrounds to our cards, as well as creating a sticky header like this in this pill shape that has this glass background to it. And we are going to make this super easy. Now, last week's video on skew morphism with Elementor got awesome feedback and i got more creative videos like this coming out weekly so make sure to subscribe if you do want to give a boost to your website's designs all right let's go ahead and get started we're going to use this landing page for the tutorial and apply our glass morphic styles to our cards and for this one we're going to use an icon box widget also an inner container but the same method that we're going to use could be applied to anything that has a background to it we're also going to be using these light styles as well so we can see how to do it in light and dark mode. And then we are going to recreate our header up here, giving it a pill shape and then making a sticky, adding that glass morphic effect to it. To get started, we need to use a CSS generator and there are quite a few free glass morphic css generators out there i'll leave a link to this one inside of the description but this is going to make it so much easier for us because we can get a visualization of the style that we want to create we have three values to adjust here the first one is our blur value i usually like to keep mine anywhere between four to eight pixels maybe up to 12 but this will just control the amount of blur that we're going to give our elements i'm going to leave it at eight for now next up is going to be the opacity same thing it just shows how much shade do we want to add on top of our card i am going to drop this all the way down to zero because i'm going to control this inside of elementor and then next up we have our saturation if we were to set this at 100 percent well that is going to give us well the exact color right here but if we go over 100 percent it's going to make it more saturated giving it more vibrance and the more vibrance you give well the more it's going to make it stand out so i usually like to leave this anywhere about 150 to 170 percent play with it find your style and once you do have the style that you want to apply to your site we're going to go right here to this css snippet but we are not going to use the whole thing because we have right here a background color, a border radius, and a border. And all three of these are going to be controlled inside Elementor. So we do not need those. What we need to copy and paste is going to be only these two lines, our backdrop filter, and then our WebKit backdrop filter, which this second line basically makes this work on our ios devices and makes it more compatible across all of our apple stuff okay let's go ahead and copy this and i'll show you how to use it inside of elementor let's go to our first box here i'm going to go to advanced then custom css from here go ahead and write in selector go ahead and create your brackets and then paste the css snippet and you can see it already created that blur effect now, the next step that I'm going to want to do is adjust it. You could just go into the CSS and adjust your properties right here. So I'm going to take this down to a four pixel and then another four pixel. And that looks a lot better to me. The next thing that you're going to want to do to adjust your style is change your background. So from here, you could either go to a solid color. Let me see. And maybe I'll go to black. And then from here, well, let's change it to RGBA so we could see our percentage of opacity. We could drag it all the way down and find the right amount of shade we want to add. And if we were to look back over at our generator, let's say we wanted our opacity to be at 10%. That's the uh, opacity we want. Well, that would be like right here at a 0.1. This is 10 percent but if you want to take your design even further and get more creative what i like to do is to add a gradient so with the gradient i'm going to choose white on the top and white on the bottom then on the top i'm going to take this opacity all the way to zero then on the bottom right here i'm going to take it all the way to almost zero like really really close to zero i'm going to leave it at this 0.05 
and then you could adjust the angle. This way it gives it more of a reflective look to it. And this is where we start to have fun with our creativity. This is where you would want to take your time, get your style just right, because once you do got your style right, all you gotta do is go over here to that little pencil, uh, select copy, and then you could paste your style to all of the other boxes. Then once you have all of your boxes set up, you could go back through and you could see, hey, do I want to add more blur? Do I want to add more saturation or change the background maybe a little bit? And this is where you would take time to make your adjustments and fix it the way you want to achieve the style that you want. Now, next up, let's go ahead and do this to an inner container. Let me open up my navigator so I could navigate inside of my block. This is for a call to action right here. I'm gonna go back over to my background and let me just go ahead and take this all the way to almost zero, switch it to RGBA so I can actually see it. I'm gonna leave it at a 10%. Let me grab my CSS snippet right here. Let's go back over here to my advanced custom CSS. Again, gonna put in selector, brackets, and then paste it in. And this is a good way to make a call to action really stand out right here. Now, the level of blur and the saturation in your background color will all depend on your, your tone of your website, the background color. And if you're gonna use a light background, it's gonna be a lot different than a dark background. But the method is exactly the same. So let's apply the method here. I'm gonna go back and pick up my CSS for here though. You know, I'm gonna make it a little bit more blurry. I'm gonna take this to eight. I'm gonna take the saturation down just a little bit. I'll probably leave this one at a 170 right here. And let's go ahead and copy this. And inside of light mode, this is what we are going to do. We're just gonna make those minor adjustments to fit it. So we can see already the saturation pops a lot more. Let me copy and paste this style across all the other ones. And then from here, you would make adjustments. Now in light style, we're gonna wanna maybe give it a little bit of a lighter background because we want the text to be visible and easy to see. Up here at the top, it's okay as it is, but we can see down here, well, it's really hard to see. So I would just go to my background and we could either do the gradients or just a solid. To keep things simple, I'm gonna use the solid. I am going to drop this down maybe to around a 20% or 25%. It's much easier to see now. And if I wanted to make it more vibrant, give it more or less blur, I could do so right here. And the best part is once we take our time and we found the style that we like, well, it is really easy to replicate to all the other cards that we have here. I could go ahead and use the same CSS snippet, make everything a lot easier, copy and paste this, go over to my inner container here, advance, custom CSS, and paste it. And then from here, I would want to make my call to action easier to read so that way I could get more conversions. Maybe here I would create a gradient. Let me try this out really quick, see if we could get something looking really good, really fast. Take that down to zero, and then this one, I'm gonna leave a little bit more than I would on the dark version. The dark version, I will use just a very little, but here, probably would use a little bit more and I would just adjust this until it gives it that good glass effect, but it's also readable as well. And now we got a really cool glass morphic effect. The gradient gives it a little bit of that reflection look. And this is a call to action that definitely stands out more than just a regular box. Now let's go ahead and set up our header because I think the pill shaped header that has a glass background is super, super dope. To get started, I'm gonna to go to my theme builder, add a new template, I'm gonna make a header and I'm gonna call this my glass header. To get started, I'm gonna add a container and then I'm gonna drop in an inner container. On the outer container, I wanna create some spacing because this container, this is gonna be my menu bar. So I'm actually gonna call this menu bar, making it easier to identify. Let's create spacing around our container. I'm gonna to go to advance. 
And then I'm going to put on the right and left something like 40 pixels. Whatever your design system is as far as your right and left, go ahead and add that. I keep mine the same across the site for all of my outer containers. That's just part of my design system. And then I'm going to put, let me put 20 on top, 20 on bottom. We could adjust this later. Next up, we're going to start adding elements. But before I do that, I want to give a background color to this template. That way it's easier for me to see while I am building it, since I am going to be using this on a more darker layout. So I'm going to turn this background black. Now from here, inside your menu bar, let's add in our logo. I'll style this up and I'm gonna make my logo 120 pixels and align it to the left. And then in advance, I am going to select start. Next up, I'm going to add a WordPress menu. And I already have my main menu set up here. Let me quickly style this up because this thing comes really wacky out of the box. It's pretty messed up, so we gotta fix it. I'm gonna change this to none. And then I am going to fix the style here. We gotta change this horizontal padding to zero, vertical padding to zero, and then add some space between. I usually change this to about 40 or 60. Also, let's change our styles here. I already got some pre-made styles. Our text color. And then right over here in advance, we want to align this to the center. Next up, let's add our call to action button. I'm going to drop it right in here. I'm going to put in get started. Just a generic button for now. Let's go ahead and position this over to the right. Set your styles. I already got mine set up and ready. In fact, I'm going to use a smaller text on this one. The text color, I am going to make it black with the background color, this bright green. For my border radius, I'll put 50. I want to have a pill-shaped button if we're going to use a pill-shaped menu. So that way it looks right. If not, it will look off. Okay, I'll leave this at 12 and maybe right and left I'll go, let's see, 32. And then over here in advance, I want to set this up to align self to the left. Now, I need to align everything in the middle and I'm going to do that right here inside my container using my flex control. So over here in layout, first I'm going to flip my direction to the right. We're going to justify content space in between, and then we're going to align everything inside of the middle. Now, right here, I can see that there is some spacing that is off. This should be in the middle. So let's go back over to our element and find out why. And that is because the align itself is to the top. Let's go ahead and change that to the middle. Okay, now we are good to go with our menu. The next step is to turn this into a pill shape. So we're gonna to go to our menu bar in advance and let's add in some padding let's go over to style we're going to give it a border radius i'm going to leave it on pixel give it a border radius of 50 and then i am going to add a border and i already created a border color right here and the first part is done we have our pill shape menu right here Next up, we need to make our menu bar sticky and to have it sit on top of our banner. To do this, we're going to go to the outer container, the container that is wrapping everything. Go over to advance, down to position, and select absolute. From here, go ahead and remove the values for both the horizontal and vertical orientation. Make sure these are empty, don't have any value in there. And then in the Z index, put in 100. Next up, we are going to go over to motion effects, select sticky on top and choose which devices do you want this to stick on. I usually don't have it on mobile since some phones are small, but that's totally up to you. Let's go ahead and update it and see how this looks in the front end. And our menu bar is looking pretty cool right now. Everything except that background. Let's now add that glass morphic background. We're gonna go back to our generator. I'm gonna make this a bit more blurred because it'll make it easier to read as people are scrolling. I want people to be able to, to see the menu and to read it. So I'm gonna add quite a bit of blur. Not more than 12, definitely no more than 14 because that's just too much blur. Let's go back over here to the menu bar. In our menu bar, we're gonna to go to advance to custom CSS, type in selector, 
add the bracket and paste in your code right here, your CSS. Let's go ahead and update it and see how it looks in the front. And now when we scroll, it makes the menu look more interesting, more easy to use as well. It stands out and that is it. It is that easy to build. What I love most about design styles like this is just opening up this world of creativity. We could combine glass morphism with other styles of designs. It just opens up a whole world for us where we could do a lot more with our websites and just tap into our inner creativity. Now, if you do have questions, definitely drop them inside the comments. And if there is another design style that you are interested in and would like to see a tutorial for, definitely let me know inside the comments as well. I got a lot more of these design videos inside of the work, so definitely subscribe. And that way you could get more creative with your websites as well. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you back inside the next one.